Welcome to Simply Science from Nature Education. I'm Adam Weiss and I'm here at Harvard with Pardis Sabeti who is an evolutionary geneticist looking at human evolution but not the human evolution that it took to get us to be humans but what's happened since then, the last few tens of thousands of years to make the different human populations more different. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. So basically I'm interested in as human populations moved across the globe in the last tens of thousands of years um, is, you know, they moved to places that were colder or warmer or uh, different with different infectious diseases where they have different uh, things, diets and things that they're eating or they may be even changing that by domesticating plants and animals. So all of those changes are affecting us much more recently. And you're actually looking in the DNA to find how these changes happened and how fast they happened, right? Yeah, so it's neat is basically we let the genome tell us what's going on. And the way we do it is based on a very simple principle that was laid out by Darwin and Wallace originally in 1858, which is the theory of natural selection. And all that says is if a trait emerges and it somehow enhances the survival or the reproductive success of the person who carries it, that individual, depends on if it's another species, is more likely to survive and reproduce and therefore pass on that trait. And their children are then more likely to survive and reproduce and pass it on to their children's children. So in a very short period of time, that trait will spread through the population. And so we turn that on its head and we say, let's go through the genome and let's find out how common every, each mutation is, how prevalent different things are. And we look for things that are very common but appear very young so that they got to that prevalence in a very short period of time. That's the signal of natural selection. So if I understand it properly, you're mm -hmm. just saying that a random change happens, a mutation that is potentially beneficial. Mm -hmm. And if it is bene beneficial, it's somewhat likely that it could stick, that it's something that helps that individual, mm -hmm. and therefore they have more children or they live longer or other things happen. Mm -hmm. And that then could spread very quickly to that population if it's, a, if it's a big enough advantage. That's right. So how do you tell how old one of these traits is? I mean, you can cut down a tree and look at its tree rings, or you can radiocarbon date uh, an old piece of wood, but if you're looking at thousands or hundreds of generations of people, you can't radiocarbon date that, right? Well, I mean, actually, those metaphors are good ones. Um, essentially, what we're, in a way, actually, the sort of tree rings or the, or the decay process is exactly what's happening in the genome. So when a mutation occurs in the genome, it originally occurs in one person, one individual, in, on one chromosome. And on that chromosome, there's all the A's, C's, G's, and T's that exist. That individual may have one combination of those A's, C's, G's, and T's. Um, and then every generation it's around, there's a reshuffling that happens that that mutation will start appearing on different backgrounds. And the more time passes, the more that background that exists on is reshuffled. And essentially, that, it starts to look like um, decay. Actually, there's a picture here on this book. And so this, this is actually, it's funny, it's a plug for this book, but it's, uh, this is The Principles of Population Genetics is the book that got me into this field by Dan Hartle and Andy Clark. And so it's a complete honor that that exact plot is on the cover now. So, and this is basically this kind of decay. Here, um, it's kind of to orient you, this is to the left and to the right of a mutation in the genome. We're looking at data from the genome, and, and the mutation would be here. And the more these sort of ba these um, different lines are emerging, the more backgrounds this mutation occurs on, the more um, years it's been around, the more generations it's been around. So essentially, it's on originally it's on one background, and in this we highlight that yellow is the original context that the mutation occurred in. And every generation it reshuffles, and there's these more and more breaks, and that tells you about how long it's been around. So this is one trait that is showing up different ways, and some of them kind of decay away, and you end up then being able to see, oh, this has been done lots of different ways, so it must be old. Yeah, this one, that, and that's exactly right. So this is actually an old, this is an old mutation. It's not the ones we're exactly interested in, but it makes a very pretty picture. Um, but the ones we're really interested in are the ones that always exist on one background, suggesting that very little time has passed and very little reshuffling has had time to occur. And so we're looking for things that are very common so that the branch would be very thick and that everyone's the same in both directions. And very little time means still tens of thousands of years, but you're actually finding traits that that means something to people these days. Things that you can actually tell are different from you to me, for instance. You'd be able to see that with this, right? Yeah, so yeah, it still takes time for these things to spread. So we're talking about thousands of years, two tens of thousands of years. And the kinds of things that we can find are infectious disease is a big one. So I think the malaria, the resistance to malaria is, is a very big, strong 
uh, evolutionary pressure. And then the other ones that are interesting are lactose tolerance, the ability to drink milk. Um, really only happened after we domesticated cattle because before then you wouldn't want to drink milk until the age of 25 or your mom would not want you to. But, um, that, but after we domesticated cattle, there's a new pressure and that spread. Um, pigment, actually, as we changed and we moved to climates with less sunlight, um, lightening of the skin so that we can absorb more sunlight and get nutrients that way um, is another big force. So it sounds like you're able to see the backgrounds of things that we really see as differences between people and figure out where they are in the DNA and how old they are. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Evolution seems to be skin, skin deep a lot uh, or involved in our infectious system. So it's really fun, the kinds of things that you find and that a lot of times the things that you uh, uncover, you would never would have expected to be important in our survival and our reproductive success. Well, I think it's really amazing that we can see this and I want to thank you very much for telling us about it. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a uh, real pleasure to be here.